Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, what kind of comedy can you expect from me for the next 20 minutes? Uh, I try not to pick on people, because most of the time folks picking on each other, they pick on surface nonsense, you know, physical appearance. You want to hurt someone, get to know them well, then stick the knife in. That's how you do it, my friends. <laughs> The stuff people pick on each other about, being too fat, being too thin. You know what the number one male-on-male -male abuse is in North America? Hair loss. In a million years, I would never make fun of a guy for losing his hair, because he could turn around and mock me for the opposite. Look at this, folks. Eddie Munster is my dad. Do you see what's going on over here? Your forehead? I got a two-head. How'd you like to have that? You worried about a receding hairline? I got an advancing hairline working up here. Now, ben, bring me back next year. It'll be Cousin It telling jokes up here, you know? I'm thinking of combing my hair down, up my butt, and around again, because... I mean, how the hell is this possible? I live nowhere near a nuclear plant. I don't understand this. Okay, my parents are orangutans, but that is not the point, my friends. So my point is, I don't make fun of people from on stage uh, who don't ask for it, but uh, sometimes when you're off stage, you want to say something to people, and I'm biting my tongue all the time. Man, the, worst, the stupidest thing anyone ever said to me was three years ago, a little over three years ago, 1996, the great comedian George Burns, I'm sure many of you remember him from the Old God movies or before that television, radio. George Burns died, he was 100 years old. He died in February of 1996. I was telling a friend of mine this, and she actually said this to me. Oh my God, George Burns died. What did he die from? <laughs> okay. He died from being born in the 1800s. That's what he died from. <laughs> Read Genesis chapter nine, and Noah called him Pops. <laughs> Gee, what, what do you think would bring down a strapping buck like George? <laughs> My theory, his parachute didn't open. <laughs> you heard of the wheel? He was the test pilot. That'll kill any man. <laughs> I live in Chicago, Illinois right now. I moved there from New York City. I left New York because I don't understand it anymore. In New York, they are so casual about murder and mugging and all kinds of stuff like that, but the pooper scooper law, they are serious about. <laughs> you know, this is crazy. In New York City, if you don't clean up after your dog, you can get a ticket from a cop on a horse. Does that make any sense? I don't think so. <laughs> His guy's dropping a bucket and a half. You miss one pebble, $50 fine. He's writing out a ticket. His partner's doing the ploppity plop on your penny loafers. You don't need this. Pretty good job, stand-up comedian. Best scam I've ever stumbled across. <laughs> Better than other jobs I've had. I was a teacher for a while back. A while back, I was a teacher for four years. You know what I realized after four years of teaching folks? I don't like kids. <laughs> That's a big obstacle right there. I, I don't like smart kids because their questions make teacher feel stupid. <laughs> and I don't like stupid kids because the parents always want to blame the teacher. And then you have to back them off and go, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Your kid was stupid when I got him, okay? That is not my fault. <laughs> I was a lifeguard. I was a lifeguard at a public pool. Now, people have a misconception about lifeguard, and I think people think that they, it's like fun in the sun, chicks in bikinis, clam bakes. Yeah, people think lifeguard is like an episode of Baywatch. <laughs> no. It's like an episode of Whale Watch. That's what it is, folks. <laughs> Now, lest you judge me, let me explain. When I was a lifeguard at my community pool, Monday through Friday, you know what I was in charge of? Pregnant women's swim class. Now, no one has more respect for the impossible job of motherhood than I do. But let's be honest with our feelings for 20 seconds. And admit, pregnant women's swim class. That's gotta be the hardest straight face you'll ever keep in your life. I mean, I appreciate most of you laughing. Some of you are still holding back. That son of a bitch on stage. He is making fun of pregnant women. Or you're holding back because you've never seen six of them flopping around in one pool. Because I'll tell you something. Every noon these women had class, I come in 11 just to lower the water level. You know what I mean? Yeah, six pregnant women in one pool. Looks like the movie Cocoon. You ever see that movie? That's... Remember that pool scene? That is not an anti-pregnant joke, by the way. That is a displacement of water joke. Let me get to the point I'm trying to get to here. We love you women. Stop giving us a hard time. I'm proud that I love the modern, complex woman. I love the, the deception, the backstabbing, the two-facedness. This is what I love. This... Oh, baby. When we fellas see you women weaving those tangled webs of drama, 
We're like dogs watching crystal chandeliers. We don't know what you're talking about, but we are fascinated by the shiny object. If I have one message for you folks tonight, it is this. If you're in a committed relationship and it's gonna last a while, please have children. Because if you don't have children, you start dressing up your pets. <laughs> you start putting tuxedos on parrots, mittens on kittens, scarves on dogs. This is not a healthy way to live. We have two cats. My girlfriend and I have two cats. One is a, a five-year-old female. The other one we got is her companion, six-month-old boy. We thought maybe he'll keep her company, it'll be nice, play. He won't, he won't get off of her. He won't stop. He will, he's like, uh, he's like a porn star, this kitty. I don't know, he's a kitty porn star. That's what he is, basically. Just, and you know, I mean, I'm not a pervert or anything, but I was watching the other day for like six hours and, uh, <laughs> You know, and the thing is, he has no style. That's what pisses me off, you know? He just holds on and vibrates. And she keeps looking back at him like, do you even know what the hell you're doing? That is the middle of my back, you idiot. Now, I'm curious, because I don't get up here very much. I'm curious what folks pay in auto insurance here, because I would imagine it's pretty steep. Steve, what does a guy like you pay in auto insurance? 300 a... 1,200 a year. Okay. Canadian, thank you very much. I mean, it's not like they stuffed me in the trunk of the car and drove me here, lady. I, I know where the hell I am. 1,200 a year. What kind of vehicle do you drive, 1,200 a year? A Hyundai. You pay 1,200 in insurance for an $800 car? Good for you, man. Whatever makes you happy. I'll tell you something, you know what I was p paying and I wasn't driving some chick magnet Hyundai like you got going. I was driving a sports car, I was driving a pacer, but that's not the point, my friends. Remember that fishbowl on wheels? Yeah, the 86, the really good model, yeah. You know what I was paying in insurance? And I had a clean record, no tickets, no accidents, clean record, but I was parking my car in the streets of New York City. You know what I was paying in insurance? $2,900 a year. American. $2,900. I asked my insurance agent as I was bent over in his office, I said, uh, I said, do you even know what the hell you're doing? Seriously, that, that is the middle of my back, you idiot. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been awfully nice. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.